Hello everybody and welcome to Resident Arcade episode 75. My name's Chris and as always I'm joined by my co-hosts Matt and Danny. Following on from last week's schedule changes, which I think went down pretty well, I'll hand over to Matt to tell us what's coming up today in today's flashback section. So Danny's pretending that he's played a game that isn't tied to the Gears of War franchise, which I will believe when I see it. Chris is coming at us with the War and Peace of Games lists so basically the same as every other week and i've been hopelessly trying to climb a virtual <laughs> mountain and a metaphorical one too <laughs> <laughs> there's lots to talk about in preview hot pants this week nintendo have given us more info on their new ring thing discord have realized that nobody including myself wants their nitro service and we'll be discussing zelda Link's Awakening and Death Stranding. And I know I said disgusting. <laughs> We're disgusting. disgusting. <laughs> We're disgusting. Are, you ready? Are you ready for all the Nintendo fanboys to start hating you? <laughs> <laughs> disgusting. No, I'm uh, kidding. Yeah. I, uh, I, I th we still need a good we still need a good name for this section, this preview hot pan section. It's hideous. It's it's come on guys. Pull your it's fingers disgusting. out. <laughs> it's disgusting. Disgusting hot pants. Oh <laughs> <laughs> You're not selling it to me. <laughs> Anyway, so let's get started with um, today's competition. So for those who haven't listened before, we have a competition at the beginning of every single show. And um, what we do is we have two minutes, or one host has two minutes to sell a game to the other hosts that they haven't played before. This has went wrong a few times. And Danny is pr proving to us after about five minutes of doing this podcast that he doesn't play any games and hasn't played any games ever because he's went through every, every game he's ever played and we've and played, you've them all. played them all. <laughs> but it's Danny's go this week. Um, so by the end of the two minutes, he has to tell us how much it costs, full price, how much it costs at the cheapest price it's been, and we will give him half a point if um, we would buy it at the cheapest price and a full point if we buy it at the full price. So let me get the timer up, Danny. Are you ready to tell us your game? I think you forgot to tell us what the name of the game is, Chris. I don't, I don't no, I don't do that. That's, that's up to Danny. Ooh, no, I mean, no, the game we're playing oh, now. Oh, shit. You call yourself professional. <sighs> that's because I went off script, you see. I completely went. I went. <laughs> he's <laughs> I went he's going, off script, going off script. Cut him, cut him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the, the name of the game is What Are You Selling? What Are You Buying? Right. I was wondering Official. what was going to So, Dan. Copyright Dan? material. Do you like that? I've never called you Dan before. Do you mind Dan? No, no, right. I really don't like Dan. You don't like, you don't? No. Okay, Danny. So what you'll see on the YouTube videos now is, ha, oh, that Dan guy, what a dickhead. And I'm just <laughs> internally <laughs> rage. <laughs> you can call me a dickhead all day, but don't call me Dan. No. <laughs> all right, Dick dickhead. Man Dan, so... <laughs> Dick Man Dan. <laughs> it's, uh, it's your goal this week. Two minutes are up. Get going now. Okay, the game I'm trying to sell is Splinter Cell Blacklist. First question, I know it's a bit of a off-script thing. Have any of you played a Splinter Cell game before? Many, many years ago, many. Yep. I mean, okay. probably Xbox era, first Xbox era. First Xbox era. I think they've, well, yeah, they've evolved a little bit. But uh, so Splinter Cell Blacklist is an action-adventure stealth game, as they all are. You play as Sam Fisher, to you know everyone's surprise. You can play it solo for the story. It's pretty boring. My favorite is playing it co-op with two players. And um, that's the match you can play. And the co-op story is absolutely well. The co-op in general is brilliant. You get to play, play through all the story missions with your mate. And yeah, just push through. The game has a small progression element in the form of something called Paladin, which in the game is a plane that you're on. The plane has... Well, it's basically a spy plane. It's a, I think it's like an AC-130. One minute left. Oh, and that plane you can upgrade as you go through the, the levels. Those upgrades for the plane affect your character when you're down on the ground, which was quite an interesting take on things. Obviously. So if you upgrade, if you upgrade the um, cockpit, you'll get like extra radar range. If you upgrade the infirmary, your character gains health faster and stuff like that. Um, I'm just going to talk about co-op now. You can do individual loadouts or you can synergize your loadouts with whoever you're playing with. So they can, because you only have a set amount of gear, you can have them carry Eight a different seconds. item if you need it. Um, basically, you play through all the story missions, as I've said, but there are also some scenarios which are lightly, very lightly tied into the story. Hell of a lot of fun. Um, we used to do the no hit mode, which was basically no hit, no detections and start again. If you ever got detected or hit, start again. But the game doesn't punish Ten you seconds. that badly for getting caught 
or even shot, to be honest. Um, but it was one of those games where we kind of made our own fun out of it and quite good to play co-op. And do. Done. <laughs> oh, I completely got that wrong there. Anyway, right, enough. That's it. Shut up. Question time. Question time. I've got a quick question. How do, well, relating to the question you asked us, how different is it? What what? When I last played it, you could do like the splits on the wall to hide away from enemies and stuff. You could. It was for me back then. It was Metal Gear versus Sprinter Cell, and it's obviously not that so. anymore because they but, don't come out in the same cadence. So yeah, they've like I'd say they've like arcadified it a bit. So they've taken a lot of the movements and a lot of the things you could do to evade enemies out and made it more to do with just hopping up into shadows rather than you know, doing crazy maneuvers and stuff like that. It's pretty much like light or dark in that game is your way of defending yourself against getting detected. Obviously, noises and other things also affect that. But yeah, they have definitely done away with a lot of the Splinter Cell stuff because I remember watching my dad play one of the like original Splinter Cells and that was looked and was way harder than Blacklist is, definitely. It's gone to more of a CQB style, like you can get in people's faces if you're in, like, you know, if there's like two of them and there's no one else around, you can kind of like really gung-ho it and still not be detected kind of thing whether it's the original splinter cells if you made like if he farted then <laughs> they'd all get detected and you'd yeah. be fucked basically yeah so Thanks. if you fart while doing the splits is that more likely to make you detected or less likely so that is <laughs> that counts as a question mark <laughs> i can work with that uh so in Never said it had to be on topic. <laughs> <laughs> in Blacklist, you can't do the splits, unfortunately. It's just not an option of movement in the game. So that's <laughs> not the question I asked, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> so effectively, your question being redundant is it has no effect on being detected whatsoever. <laughs> One of the controllers I've got um, for my PC, it's like an Xbox One clone controller. It's got it's got buttons underneath, and I'm I'm imagining that that's what those buttons are for. Hidden buttons that are only on this one controller. I press the, the split button. and fart button, and my, my, play, my Xbox crashed. Oh dear, I followed through. Uh, right, so um, it's gone more arcadey. Um, it's I, I'm, in that sense, then it's more accessible. I'm assuming yeah. than it used to be. Um, and is there more or less gadget focus? Because I can't really remember what kind of gadgets were involved in the original. I think it was the original plane. I think it might have been on PC, actually. So, put it this way, you can get, you can very easily get through an entire mission without the use of gadgets and just using your primary, usually a silent pistol. There is literally no need to use a gadget. You can, especially if there's, well, Single player, it helps because it's like a second person, isn't it? Whatever you put out, it's going to help you. Co-op, literally no need. You can go through with a pistol if you want, but that also applies to, to, to single player a little bit. If you're really quite good with the game and know where you're going, you, you, the gadgets are there. It's just more for entertainment purposes rather than a tactical advantage of being able to get through the game, if you see what I mean. So it's right. like there if you want to use it. Matt? Hmm. So with the co-op, is it balanced specifically for co-op? So are enemies harder? Do they, are they more likely to hear you? What, what do, does it increase any difficulty? No. So you increase the difficulty. So you can play co-op easy, medium, or uh, sorry, easy, normal, or realistic. So we always went to the realistic because it punished you a little bit more and made it way harder. Um, but in terms of like just dropping into a session with another player, it doesn't instantly make the enemies any more difficult. You choose that before you set up the lobby. I had a question before Matt asked his. I've forgotten what it was now. Was it about a certain sort of position you could adopt and how it affects your body movement? <laughs> if or I know, you get, you, you get IBS by proxy. <laughs> um, <laughs> these computer viruses, IBS by proxy. <laughs> right, so um, a lot of these games, a lot of these kind of Metal Gears, Deus Ex, you know, That's the kind of stealthy types. games... Do you yeah. get more points? Is there any incentive to be stealthy, or can you literally go around headshotting everybody and be done with it? There is like um, a rating at the end that gives you like so. If you go around a mission without alerting anybody, you would get like it's almost like at the end of a Devil May Cry mission, you get like an S or an A or something like that. It's basically a similar thing, but it was like Panther or. Um, 
a soul it gives you like a like a badge basically to say how like to identify your play style gassy baboon so, <laughs> you, <laughs> amounts of times he did the splits 20 and yeah gassy baboon for that one <laughs> times he managed to keep it in <laughs> but yeah it gives you it gives you a it gives you a badge and it gives you like points but it's not really it's more of a like a almost for a leaderboard type thing that's pretty much it so i'm gonna give i'm gonna give you i know we've all we've asked our three questions i'm gonna give you a little oh I've, I've still got one more. Well, you don't because you had to ask that farty question at the beginning. I've only but... asked two questions, including the oh, farty question. Oh, we'll look back at the recording now. Great, right, go on. Go on. <laughs> we'll cut it's... your third, fourth question out. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> no, the last question I was going to ask is, um, how can you, do you have to play it stealth or can you go in guns blazing? Do, yeah. Does it give you the facility and the weapons to do that? Yeah, definitely. Okay, quick question. There we go. That was basically the question I just asked, really. Yeah, but I was more direct with it. All right. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to, because Dens did an absolutely terrible job of actually selling the game to us, I want to know why I should buy it. You didn't actually tell me why I should buy it. Because okay. it's, it sounds to me like it's just oh, I've uh, got a perfect response to that one. A more arcade version, like a arcade version of a game that I played many years ago. Because you can sit on your couch, your mate, and you can shoot terrorists in Ed and that. So Counter Strike, um, you can't no, sit no, on your no. couch. I suppose with Counter Strike, <laughs> can you? No, but mm. that's what it is. It's a very intimate co op. <laughs> split, is it split screen? Um, no, it's online. You can't sit on your couch with your mates. No, you it. can sit on your couch, and they can sit on their couch. Oh, so that's that's intimate, is it? Is that yeah. a, is that well, yeah, is that millennial intimate? Yeah. That's... Coffee and Netflix yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Netflix Co and Snuggle or whatever get, they call it. Get off my couch. <laughs> Go and find your own couch in a yeah. different room and then we can VoIP each other. <laughs> is that what you kids do? Netflix and Snuggle. <laughs> Netflix and Snuggle. <laughs> right, anyway, Jesus Mark, Mark you, I'm so old. I'm sorry. Mark, what would you buy it? Oh, in fact, what's the price, Dan? That was See, my next question. Sixteen ninety nine full price. I haven't got you a lowest. Get me a lowest. Where, I have no oh. idea where to right. find a lowest. Right. Is um, it on some... Steam? It is on Steam. Is there like a database we can look at? I've there um... is. Ooh. I'll, I'll let Chris do it. Me and you all have a chat, Danny. So why should I buy this shit game? I mean, game. <laughs> <laughs> Not Steamworks.com. What the fuck is wrong with me? It's, is there any deal? I, I did have the web page I've, open but i've got a plug in. if i go on a steam store i've got a plug in and it tells me everything <laughs> everything ever i've got a plug in for counter-strike that shows me people behind walls but you don't hear me bragging <laughs> <laughs> right 16.99 standard edition and lowest price was five pound or three historical Ooh. low is one pound 45 Oh. It's Jesus an old Christ. game. I had to dig back for that. Dig back. <laughs> All right. Um, when was it out? 2013. It's not that old. I suppose it's old for you. Yeah. You, you what was I doing in 2013? All right, I Matt, was probably like 11. Matt, would you buy it at... <laughs> 2013, you were 11. £1.45. <laughs> would you buy it at £1.45, Matt? At £1.45, if there was a few of us playing it at a LAN and I was about, say, five to six stubbies in, yes, I'd buy it. <laughs> What about full price? No. <laughs> no. Right. I'm not sure if we can, I'm not sure no. if we can award him a point for that cuz I think we have to say we are anybody would rather. buy anything for a quid on yeah. Steam. <laughs> <laughs> if if all your is. mates if all your mates are playing it, but otherwise you wouldn't buy it and play it on your own off your own back. Probably not now. Okay. Neither would I. It sounds like shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think at the land though we should have a go oh fuck off I should get points put back on <laughs> well, by, by, by the end of the season we might have had the land and we might have bought it so you might That's get additional true. points I might get bonus points bonus points on top of my zero that I didn't get in the actual <laughs> podcast <laughs> but I I'd, could still I'd, get two points I'd, I'd give like a quarter point like like I said <laughs> how credible like, are we going well <laughs> No point, I, I not will, one of a point. One second, let me get my Thinking calculator about it. Since so. I'd only play it with five friends and not four, I'll give you 0. <laughs> 0.025 of a point. Um, Can you play second. it with five? 
No. <laughs> well, sure, then. You can't give so, that. <laughs> one point divided by my interest in this game. So that comes out to... I'll give you 0.165 points. You can't really see it, but there you go. 0.165. Right. <laughs> I'll make a note of that. Do you know what? If I come out at the end of this season with 0.165 <laughs> more than you guys, you're going to be salty as balls, and I'm going to laugh. Oh. And it's still a zero from me. Fair enough. <laughs> But I've still got the 0 0.165. <laughs> Just keep that in your... Yeah, but at the end of the season, we have to either round up or down. So at the moment, it's still sat at zero. <laughs> oh, we're having none of that. I'm not rounding up. No, no, no. It's all decimal these days. Okay. We'll see. Whatever the spreadsheet does, whatever the spreadsheet I put it into. Right, so come on. Let's move on. Right, ridiculous. <laughs> Shit game. Up your game, Danny. Wow. Up your game, Danny. I literally... Yeah, you play too many games. <laughs> you don't play any games. That's the problem. You I don't do. play anything. I play loads of things. Calculator oh. app is not a game. <laughs> Solitaire. Mate, don't rag on Solitaire. I have got, rag on it. I've got some fantastic scores in Solitaire. It's my go-to airplane game. <laughs> in fact, I might do that for my game. Guys, have you heard of a game called Sudoku? <laughs> Sudoku? I haven't heard of Sudoku, no. Sudoku. It's um, it's the Linux got... alternative. Is that, is that the new From Software game? It is. It yeah. is sud Sudoku. Um, Sh numbers sud die twice. Sud <laughs> <laughs> right, come on. Let's move on. Flashback section. So this is where we talk about games that we've played over the last week. So Danny's out already. Um, <laughs> on to... Games? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I've got tons of games. I've, I've actually completed some this week, and I'm going to bash off a few that, um, that I've wow. talked about previously. Did you get consent? Uh -huh. Come on, <laughs> come on! It's an I adult podcast. It's not a child's podcast. Obviously. Um, right. So, Horizon Zero Dawn finished it off. Completed the. Not much more to say about it, other other than the humble brag of of finished it. Not going to bother with the DLC because I've got a little bit bored of it. Um, apparently, it's really good the DLC, but is enough. And the story was quite satisfactory by the end of it. I, I, I enjoyed it. Nice. Um, a dystopian kind of weird future and there quite a few twists as well that I wasn't quite expecting I, I guessed some of it but most most of the big points I didn't I didn't guess good enjoyed it uh, also finished off Dying Light the main campaign I did complete it before and by the way the one thing I've got to say about the very end sequence in that is quick time events yeah 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 fuck those for d there's no other quick time events apart from when you get grabbed by a zombie you know when you happen to have the the push away move upgrade and and what the honestly i had to rebind wasd for some reason i couldn't get a d w and s right i got w and s but not a and d um, I so I had to re rebind them to my up, down, left, right <laughs> arrow keys to get it right. Because I just kept dying over and over. To a quick time event. It, no, because it really ruins the flow. Yeah. It fucks the flow up really badly. Because you're like, oh shit, I'm going to this tower. You're running around. You're trying to like dodge shit. You get up there. And then all of a sudden, it's just like, oh, can I just beat the shit out of you? No. You've got to press this key combination in the right order at the right time, otherwise. Start and then, again. if you don't do it within a split second, you restart from the beginning of the sequence. So basically, you have to remember W A D W W S A A. It's just, it just, it ruins the end for me. But it was good, you know. Other than that, DLC. Been playing the DLC, um, the following DLC. Dan, you said Danny. Sorry, you said you haven't. Uh, I don't you haven't have played it. Oh, you're missing out, man. Get it. Put it on your wish list. It would even be my next game that I want to sell. It's that good. I'm, I'm Can you sell it. DLC? Is that it's a full game? game. Is it's it? It's massive. Yeah. There's. I mean, there's. It, it feels like some of the missions are like deliver this letter to here, go and do this. But you, it's the journey doing that is enjoyable. It's yeah. really fun, as you've said before. Really fun playing Dying Light, um, and. The, the, when you finish the main game as well, you also open up all the daily challenges and all of the all of the bounties. So you have an infinite amount of things to do if you really care. But the the DLC basically, there's two major changes. One, it's a m much bigger open area, so it's a couple of kilometers across. It's bigger than all of the maps in the main game put together. There's not as much things to do. There's like one or two little towns. Um, there's a lot more like Bolter areas, that kind of thing. 
but there's a fucking buggy that you get to upgrade, and it's got its own like upgrade tree. tree. I haven't upgraded it much yet, but you get things like uh, an alarm that you can add to it, and you can electrify the uh, the buggy yeah. and stuff. And I haven't again upgraded it much, but it's pretty good, pretty good. Judging um, by how excited you are by this buggy, I'm going to assume that it's powered by berries, and you have to pick berries to power the buggy. A lot less berries in this version, actually. Uh, there's more berries in the original, well, herbs or whatever you want to call them. Uh, but there's a lot less in, in this one. I've not found that many. But because you're, you're bezzing around in this buggy most of the time, so you don't really get a chance to stop. I have as also um, up to the difficulty from normal to hard playing it. Have you tried it on hard? Yeah. Do you not remember the Yorkshire scenario? Oh, is that because you, you were That's on hard? That's because we were on hard. <laughs> we were kicking a guy. I mean, I'll reiterate this because it's bad. We were kicking a guy, three of us, three feet, three feet per second. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a... <laughs> that's not a very fast measure. That's it's a beating a measurement. <laughs> it's a beating measurement. And with, with how many newtons of force? <laughs> a lot. We were beating this guy, and he was just curling into a bookcase more and more, and he just wasn't dying. I mean, all right, there were the NPC actual humans alive, so they were supposed to be a bit more difficult, but it was just unrealistically hard. But if it's DLC, you've got upgraded weapons and stuff, so it might make a difference, because our weapons were ineffective. On hard, it's like you need to be really like like looking into your upgrade tree properly. Hmm. And if you're not, you're just picking random bars up or something with like three more damage in your last weapon, you're going to struggle. So maybe it's all right for you if you've upped the difficulty of that late on. Well, I, I've upped it when, when you start, when I started the DLC, it's not a new game plus, but it might as well be. It's not named a new game plus, but it's used all, I've got all my inventory, I've got all of my weapons, I've got all of my, I'm on level 22, 25 or something for some of yeah. my skills. But I die a lot on hard um, yeah. on my own. I've it's usually, especially when you're in the buggy, that the people grab hold of it and they just batter you, and you're like, "How the fuck do you get them off?" You know, apart from smash into things, which makes them fucking jump more. More of them jump on you if it's volatile. <laughs> or it's, but um, I've also there's also like lots of volatile nests and stuff you have to go and empty, which yeah. is kind of I know they've got like like quarantine zones in the original, but it's yeah. more part of the the missions and stuff. It's highly recommended, and I would. It, it, it won't be that expensive. I think it goes on sale fairly regularly. I got the whole thing for like nine quid. Okay. The game plus all the DLC plus a lot of you know rubbish, you know the packs, um, uh, aesthetic yeah. stuff, soundtrack. Well, I, funnily enough, you get a car alarm as well, uh, upgrade, and it's got like heavy metal playing, so you you can <laughs> you can run, you, you press hold E, and it plays heavy metal, and then all the zombies will. I like flock to the car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, it the, <laughs> is it the ultimate collection you've got or the enhanced edition? Enhanced edition I've got, but I think the ultimate collection's probably got all the additional DLC because then there's a lot of there's a lot of additional um skins and things like that that I haven't got. But I've got Be the Zombie Mode. I haven't played that yet. Um I've got the following DLC, which I definitely didn't have on my PS4, but I had the Be the Zombie and I had to go with the Be the Zombie, but you had to be online and it was that was it. Yeah. Um, and there's something else as well as some other little packs that just add additional things into the games. It's worth it. It's definitely worth it. And I, I'm more than up for having a go with any of his. Um, grab it. Yeah, I'll see how much it is. Anyway, all my other games are new, so I'm going to let someone else go. So, Matt, what have you been on with? Well, this week, as we said, I've been climbing a metaphorical mountain. Um, I've been playing Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy, a game where you are a nude man in a cauldron. How do you know he's nude? Well, you don't. I, mm. I would assume. I would assume. I don't want to assume, but I would assume. Have you Especially... ever got to the top of the mountain? No. So it's maybe not... you find out then. Maybe you maybe find you get out. to the end, and it turns out that the maybe. hammer that you're swinging is actually like a metaphor for his big swinging dick. I don't know. I haven't got there yet. <laughs> Possibly. But what I'm learning is it's not so much about the destination as it is the journey. And now I've got that T-shirt slogan out of the way. <laughs> I will say that I am thoroughly enjoying it. Like it, it's just, it, it's hard. It's incredibly unforgiving, but it's satisfying in a weird weird way is it hard or is it is it difficult um controls like is it like a co-op difficulty controls or is it kind of you, you basically you have one control and that's your mouse you don't click anything you don't press any buttons it's just about using your mouse to orient a hammer to climb a mountain 
and that that's all you have to do. Can you explain to me how it works? Because I've not ever I've never played it. It's on my wish list, and I'm going to grab it as soon as I have time. But what? so basically, you you have you you can't move because you're stuck in this cauldron, and presumably because you're so terrified of the world seeing your genitals, you don't want to get out the cauldron. So you're using a hammer to basically that's the that and the cauldron are the only things that interact with the world. So the handle doesn't. It's just the end of the hammer and the cauldron. So you can sit that down and you can use the hammer to move around the place so you can hook it on things or you can put it underneath yourself and push yourself up. But all your movement is with this hammer. Hmm. And it's it's strange at first, but once you get used to the movement, it's not too bad. Although I'm saying that and I fell, I've, I've, fall, I, I've fallen so many times and there's been so many times I've rage quit and then five minutes later I'm playing it again. And for me, that's the sign of a good game, a game that irritates the fuck out of you, but five minutes later, you're playing it again. See, I've, I've got a, a, familiar, a similar game, rather, uh, to talk about soon, but th that gives me exactly those feelings, and I'm not sure if I like it or not, and that's the problem. If it's so frustrating that it's making me rage quit, that's not a good headspace to be in for computer games for me. No, I, I get that, but it, it's... For me, I like it. I like the challenge. I like games where I can get to the end of it and look back and go, you know, Christ, I can't believe I've actually done this instead of doing something meaningful with my life. You know, pat myself on the back a little bit there. But it's it's just like the narration as well makes it because you have, I presume, Bennett Foddy just kind of chiming in every now and then with just little kind of pseudo philosophical philosophical statements. Um that don't always make you feel better like immediately <laughs> sometimes it's like you smug aussie twat but then like it it, it grows on you and, like a couple minutes later you kind of you, it's been ruminating a little bit and you're like yeah i guess you're right but you're, <laughs> you're still a dick shut what, up <laughs> is it is it multiplayer or co-op in any well not co-op but is it multiplayer in any way no although if it was co-op and you could push your friends off and cause like lasting damage to a friendship i would be all over that so I I mean I want it. I want the game. Could have, you could have used that next week, Matt. So, well could. Oh no, Danny's so got good. it. Danny's got it. Oh no. Can't Rubbish. use it. Um but I I yeah, it's it certainly appeals to me because it's different more than anything. And I like to I like to play games that are different to to I don't know, just to it's it's not just an FPS, it's not just an RTS, it's not just a puzzle game, you know, and it's and I, I like it, to it, have it, a go. It's a unique concept, and that's what I like. It's something vastly different. I, I think it originally started out as a Flash game called Sexy Hiking, um, yes. and then it was borrowed or whatever you want to call it and turned into a game on Steam, and now it's not Sexy Hiking. It's getting over it. And, yeah, it like I say, it's just it's strange. It's weirdly motivational. And... I hate falling off of things now. I am mad all the time. <laughs> all right, Danny. I've got it in my library, so I will be <laughs> playing it. I have briefly, and I mean briefly, been playing Middle Earth Shadow of War. Just get out. What is the point of you being here, Danny? Why? Honestly. Why? I have actually played it. Uh, briefly. Yeah. Like... Did, can you define briefly? <laughs> like an hour and a half. That's about it. I've been busy. <laughs> Extraordinarily busy. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Have you got any opinions on it? Or... Yeah. I like Start, it. Start it feels screen is beautiful. <laughs> no, no. It's, it feels I very... my controls. <laughs> <laughs> I rebound every key. <laughs> and now I'm about to press new game. No. Um, yeah, I'm actually, from what I've played, I'm enjoying it. It's um, obviously in Middle Earth, so it's around the same universe as Lord of the Rings. I'm fighting orcs and mythical creatures and shit. Very, it feels very similar to like the Assassin's Creed kind of combat, like where you can bounce around from enemies very quickly. Um, Have you played Batman? Uh, ooh, a while ago. It's, but... it's basically the Batman combat system. Yeah, um, it's like it's the same engine that they they bought it for it. it uh, okay, it's 
yeah, it I like it, but it has its jankiness. Like you can end up bouncing around. Like if you because I'm kind of like a click spammer. If I'm getting into combat, I'm just spamming the click button until I need to do something else, like move out of the way or block or something. You mouse and keyboard in it. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I didn't. Well, I, for, for most games, I will play mouse and keyboard unless I. Think, I, I think I tried I it with um, Shadow of Mordor. Was it Shadow of Mordor? Yeah, original? that was the first. I played it, and then I thought, "No, I'll give it. I'll give the. I'll give the control pad a go, and it's miles better with a control pad. Oh, okay. It's, it's did, like it's like mentioned. the Batman games that play better with a pad because you have to right. hold one button down and press another one to do certain moves, and hold press two, yeah. you know, like Y and X at the same time or something. Got you. Yeah, I mean, like, mind you, you won't have got that I, far yet. You won't have upgraded your skill tree enough to <laughs> unlock any moves. The opening cinematic. I'm fifty percent through it <laughs> <laughs> so far. Um. Yeah, you bounce around from enemies quite a lot. You catch enemies that you've like kicked a mile away, and then you'll suddenly like zip across and go and hit them. And it's a little bit janky in that regard. But that, that's by design, actually. That's uh, they, did, they do that so you can continue the flow and you can get yeah. combat combo uh, build ups. There's in. another. There's another word for it in that game. It's like a bloodlust or something. I can't remember. Right, got you. So it's to keep it. Yeah, sometimes it does break flow in some combat scenarios though because it can it kind of picks the furthest enemy away so you know what i mean yeah if you if you're using a pad you can use the left stick uh or the right one of the sticks to kind of direct where you'll where, where you're you'll going be fighting that, that explains a lot then because with the WAS and d keys you're very much like yeah it's not analog is it so it's very mm. difficult it's either up down left or right so um i've managed to upgrade one skill point actually matt so you oh and it's uh Absolutely use, it's absolutely useless. It basically just <laughs> That's because you over. wazzed in it. Because <laughs> I it allows me to get over objects a bit quicker. Um throws you into a cool mechanic though. I'm in Gondor currently, and I have to interrogate enemies to find out generals. Mm-hmm. Which because I've never played any of Middle Earth games before, and then obviously now it's continuing on. This is the first one I picked up. But you get to interrogate enemies to find out like key players on the battlefield generals and, and things like that yeah pretty pretty cool and they've all got their particular strengths and weaknesses and that's and if pretty, one of them if cool. one of them kills you they'll come back really uh, later on and they'll be like they'll know that they killed you and they'll taunt you <laughs> and and yeah it's really good it's like loads of min- mid bosses basically uh, it's called yeah. the nightmare system i think they called it okay you know, the nemesis system. nemesis system nemesis yeah. system um yeah. it's re- yeah that's what i read well I liked quite a lot about the original game. Um, the, I said the only reason I haven't got the second it's on my list, I'll get it, you know, if it's ever really cheap, is because I was told that it was very much similar to the first. Yeah. Um, but it's it was good. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. Yeah, it's really like it's cutting. It seems to flow quite nicely as well with cuts because it does a lot of cutscene story based stuff, which I like. And it definitely cuts in just at the right places. It's not jarring or anything like that, so it's pretty nice. Um, I felt like the original story was the only thing that kind of let it down a little bit. It felt, um, it felt like it draw drawed on a little bit towards the end of the game. I don't know if they did they've changed it in the first one. I don't even know what the reviews are like. Um, yeah, I don't have anything to like. I'm just literally going into my first major mission here, so like, yeah, literally have no reservations or opinions on the story at the minute. So, well, but I will be continuing it. Sorry. I'll buy it tomorrow and I'll finish it before next week just so we can uh, talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Funny guy. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, Dan. So, go on then, Chris. Let's carry on your trail of games that you've got to talk about. <laughs> so, there's only actually only two, three others. First of all, I tried the Crying Sons demo. Um, How did you find it? it, it it's very story heavy. Extremely really? story heavy, yeah. There's a lot of uh, exposition at the beginning. I like it as well. I like the world. the 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 premise is is that these there's these robot things that humankind have created that basically humans no longer invent things. These omnis, these robots, invent everything. So all of the tech has come from these omnis. You've been woken up as a clone, and you basically at once you know, like FTL, you're at the very beginning of the universe. You have to try and work your way back to uh, the center of civilization, and everything's different. It's hundreds of years later, or you don't really know. You're trying to figure it out, um, and you have to collect fuel like you do in FTL. You have to collect scrap like you do in FTL, and you have to collect tech and weapons and stuff. Um, the combat is quite different. It's not room-based like in FTL. It's 
essentially you've got sections of your ship, like you've got weapons, shield, and um, something else. Uh, oh, uh, like ships. Flash, fucking... Flashing bulbs. No, you... <laughs> There's three, three sections. One that sends out your armada, like your your ships. Um, then you've got weapons, which is ones that shoot you. Obviously, you shoot other ships or shoot other... Um, fucking hell, what are they called? All right, there's the big frigates, and then there's the guns. ships. Guns. No, not guns. There's the, oh, my God, my brain Destroyers? Stopped. I don't know. No, they're, they're, like, they're like little fighters. That's it. So you send out mm. fighters, um, and the fighters can meet in the middle, or the fighters can go and collect things, or they can go and... Um, attack the other ship but your weapon can also do the same thing but that's like an instant fire after it builds up um shields haven't done much with them yet but you also have crew members like you do in ftl but they're more static you can shift them between uh rooms physically they don't move they, they you just sit right you just click on another room move them move them to another room and it takes some time to kind of charge up get to that room um and it's good it's it's i said it's more story heavy than it is uh anything else i've struggled <laughs> it's really difficult uh, i didn't get to the end of the demo put it this way i got about three battles in the first couple were dead easy like easily easily like killed the ships and then the third one just went nope right ego this is the real game <laughs> fuck off <laughs> I, I died within <laughs> seconds you know i was like i obviously didn't know what i was doing but yeah, yeah i can imagine if you like ftl go for it i think i'll get it when it's uh when it's out I'd that was reckon. always one of that was always one of my favourite things in FTL. You could progress and think, do you know what? I'm doing really well here. And then the game would just stop you in your tracks like, no, you're a bag of shit and your spaceship's a bag of wank and mm -hmm. now you're dead. And that that was it. And you just had to sit there eating shit and like it. If you hadn't <laughs> if you hadn't upgraded your shields enough or you hadn't upgraded your weapons or you hadn't got the right weapons for a particular a type of yeah ship that you're attacking, it's not as transparent as it is in FTL. But then again, I know FTL quite well, so I imagine it's a learning curve thing. You know, I'll probably have a go at the demo a few more times before I, I commit to the game. But I'd recommend the demo. It's quite fully featured and it's worth it if you like that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm going to download it after the podcast. Get on it, get on it, Danny. There's a good game. There's a game there for you, and it's free. You don't have to even think about it. Oh, did you see his face when he said there's a game there? Game mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do I a development know. podcast if you if you do any development. You can come on and uh, talk talk <laughs> on that one instead. <laughs> so I downloaded, <laughs> I downloaded Unity. What well, about I've... it then? <laughs> well, I've only downloaded got it. I've only pressed new projects so far. <laughs> really like the UI. <laughs> I like Fuck the up. tutorial videos. <laughs> Right. No, I don't do development work like you do anyway, so I can't even come on NDI. I, uh, <laughs> DNI. 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 God NDI. What am I thinking? NDI. Oh, that's the fucking casting software I use. Never mind. Yeah, DNI. <laughs> so other two games I've played. Plug. Other two games I've played are, uh, speaking of games that make me want to kill everybody and everything and uh, destroy the entire planet, it, Bloodborne. I've had a go of it, finally. I played it one night this week. I put it in, I thought, right, I finished, I finished Horizon Zero Dawn. I thought, I need a new PlayStation 4 game. I got the, the big pile that I've got that I haven't played yet. And I thought, right, I'll, I'll, I'll ask the wife. And the wife liked the sound of Bloodborne, so I put, put it on. And I hated it. And I played <laughs> it. And I, I played it for an hour. And I died a million times. And I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And I was like, what are these blood things? I don't understand what I'm doing. Uh, why is the first enemy destroying me without me i'm not what why is this so difficult and then i figured it out and then i figured out that you have to fight every enemy slightly differently and you have to change your stance a lot and you have to and i figured out what the um blood souls no blood uh blood memories blood echoes blood echoes yeah, yeah. i figured out what the blood echoes were and when you lose them th there's there's the risk reward thing as well that yeah Last night, right, I've been playing it quite a bit actually since then. Um, I'm on to the second big boss. I've done the cleric. Um, uh, the second boss is Father Gascoigne or something. Yeah. And I'm on to him and I got him down to 10% health and then he changed uh, to this new form and killed me. Um, I don't find it as frustrating now, but last night I spent two hours getting 10,000 blood echoes. I got to 9,000, because I wanted 10,000 so I could get a particular key to open the cathedral, which is, I don't even fucking need the key yet. I just wanted to get 10,000 blood echoes to, to buy it. And um, got to 9, 
9,800 or something, died quite close to a lamp post, and it was basically between the lamp post and where my blood echoes were, I uh, there was a dog, and there was some standard mobs. There was nothing. And I knew where they were. I'd played it so much. I knew exactly where they were. I knew what was coming up. You can see it was coming, don't you? Right? And th yep. with Bloodborne, if you don't get your... your if you don't get back to the enemy that killed you or the place where you died and pick your blood echoes up and you, you die before then, you lose all of those blood echoes. So what did I do? I gung-hoed it and thought, right, it's only around the corner. Smashed the first first couple of guys, ran into them, smashed them, did you know, I was, I was dead confident by this point. Walked around the corner, walked into a fucking cage, got caught, and the dog killed me. And I was like, oh my god, I've only got 200 blood echoes, and I've just lost nine, I've just lost two hours worth of it was my own fault, though. That's what was annoying, is that I just went into it all fucking Billy Big Balls. Like, the, they... the thing, any Souls game will teach you exactly what you've just said. It was my own fault. It's an exercise in patience. It is. Yeah, I can echo that. I love how every single enemy that I fought, I think up to a point, maybe, I don't know if you get to a point where you reach a ceiling and you're like, right, I need to dodge first and figure out this guy's patterns before I try and engage him. When I first played, the first couple of sessions that I played, I was petrified. Every single, you know, there's a house that you can go into right near the beginning of the game. Just, I didn't want to go into the house. I was like, I've got 3,000 blood echoes. If I go in there, there might be a new enemy that I've never seen before. And I just stood outside saying to the wife, shall I go in? Oh, shall I, shall, shall I just shall I just go back? Shall I go and go to the lamppost and go and spend my blood echoes before I go in there? And then, the, and then, obviously, there was one time when I walked up to where the cleric the the cleric beast was and didn't realise he where he was and got locked into the area and thought no, ran off and I was locked in. So <laughs> obviously, I lost all the blood echoes I had then as well. Yeah, it's it's punishing, but mm. it's. It's very addictive, and it's got that roguelike element to it. It's got that, yeah. you've got one life, but I'm going to actually give you a bit more of a chance here. You can get all of your progress back if you're careful. So it's not that roguelite element that you get. I suppose it is roguelike, because you get the progression element as well of, of upgrading your weapons and upgrading your, your character. Has it ever been compared to a roguelike? I don't no. I don't know. I, I'm sure at some point in the history of time, somebody's compared it to a rogue. Like, I, I get what you're saying. Like, you you have the option to kind of pick your progress back up, but you get to a certain point with games like this where you realize, like, especially with the Soul Series game, you realize there's no shame in running. Like, you don't have to fight everything. And sometimes the best thing you can do is run in, get your souls, all your blood echoes, all your demon bars, or whatever game it is and whatever they want to call whatever it is you pick up that's exactly the same and just get out of there because it's fine it doesn't matter it's about progress it doesn't matter about beating everything like you, you honestly especially like um especially dark souls games you get to a certain point where you think i don't have to kill these guys anymore i'm just gonna run past them and you progress so much quicker once you get used to that i've done that once or twice and it's also interesting that i started really really slow like you get the same amount of of blood echoes for everything but like you get 48 blood echoes for killing a standard mob and that's the same since the beginning of the game that might upgrade later on in the game i suppose but yeah at the moment it's it's been the same since i started playing and it's took it took the first time i played it it took me ages to get to a thousand and then and now i can run through it and within half an hour i've got six thousand seven thousand and then I reach those two, there's two particular enemies at the moment that are doing my tits in. One of the, and they're, they're quite early on, you experience them quite early on. They're like the, I think I think it's the very first enemy you see actually, the, the beast that's eating the corpse in the... Um, oh, the uh, werewolves. Yeah, the werewolves. There's two werewolves on top of the bridge near the cleric. Yeah. Those two fuckers, even now, I know I, if I get my flame out, if I get my torch out and I've got, you know, a single-handed weapon. I can. That that's the best way to fight them. But they just get me almost every time. They get me, and I just can't quite figure out what what you, to you've do. Got, you've got two options. One of which you probably won't like, but you can. The, I know the two you mean on the bridge. 
there's a little guard hut next to it where you, you go up onto the bridge. You can cheese them because they do get stuck in the doorway and you can just kill them that way, which is also a really efficient way of farming the healing item, blood pellets or blood... Blood vials. Everything's blood in that game. Yeah. It's, um, you can either do that or run past them. Yeah. Um, it's not... They, when I'm farming everybody and I'm trying to get the that 10k blood echoes considering the limited number of enemies that are available within that particular area that I've got open at the moment, um, I could probably get about 13,000 Blood Echoes in total, and they are easier than some of the other enemies. The other enemy that does my tits in, absolute does my tits in, are one of the rat enemy things that he's got a, a spear. And he, he, if he hits you, that's it. You've had it. Yeah, I mean, you can try and get away, and you might just get away with very, very little health left, but he's just a fucker, and his reach is a... Oh. Is, uh, sorry, go on, Danny. Is Bloodborne very similar in that, because in Dark Souls you've got bonfires, and you sit at those, and then lamps. reset the enemies. So it's it's lamps, lamps in Bloodborne, Bloodborne because I've not played it, but... I wouldn't say they're in particularly convenient locations so far. There's one, oh, like, no. you get really, really early on in the game, and it's very close to the start of the game, and then there's one... At the Cleric Beast, and I mean, I don't know if that that whole gate area opens up in the future, but there's it's right at the end of a big long bridge, and then you have to run back on yourself. It's it's more about when you start at a particular um, lan lantern. It's about figuring out how to get to where you want to go next from that, and what's the easiest route from there. Like yeah. once you've opened up a particular gate right next to the first lamp. That opens up a whole area of the game that you can go and you know you can go and do Father Gascoigne pretty quickly, but you still have to get through some fairly standard mobs to get to that point, and then there's yeah. some better than standard mobs you have to do as well to get to that point, and then there's also a trap like a big rolling fucking fireball that comes down one of the bridges. It's it's a brutally hard game. I don't think I've ever played anything unless I played a game on like the nightmare setting, you know. That, that's been by default that difficult by design and I know that is exactly what they are and I knew what why that's why I've avoided them but I that's totally what, get why they're addictive what I find good about the particular well I'll just quickly I was going to tag on the back of the com the comment I did start like with Dark Souls of, as I've learned it's kind of like because the enemies reset at a bonfire or a lantern and what have you it's sort of like you, you you get past those enemies for like the first time and you might learn their patterns and what have you and then it just yeah literally becomes a nuisance later on in the game when you wanted to just rush to a boss and that's what I, I side with Matt saying just run past them for the most part if you don't really they're not really worth your time after a certain point it's kind of just like to just throw more shit at a wall and see what sticks but what I do enjoy about the Souls games is it doesn't make anybody's health ridiculously hard to chip away or anything close to it it's purely based down to timing and tactics of how you deal with the particular enemy because you can and people have done it before you can start off as like the lowest level character with a fucking broken sword and as long as your timing is down you can just blast through the game you have to get to a certain level to get past certain areas but do you know what i mean like keeping it base you don't have to upgrade your character in any way to make your progress easier because it doesn't get easier like that it's purely based on like literally bettering yourself it's weird, like yeah. you know what I mean. It's the person behind the controller that gets better. That you know. Well, it's the game. it's interesting you say that because they don't have, as you said, they don't have any kind of um, the enemies don't level with you, do they? No. From what I can tell, they always have the though. same amount of health. They always take the same amount of health off you. And if you have the only reason that you would get better, sorry, the only reason that you would, um, yeah, your character improves is that you get blood echoes and improve your character off your own back you could as you said you could just run through the game i With, suppose yeah you could do it all yeah. in one life I, yeah. I mean at a certain point it does become a rhythm game as long as you understand the rhythm of the enemy you're fighting mm. you you'll never take a hit you know so some people make the game look so trivial just because they understand the timing of everything and that that's all it is is timing it's what caught go on i was gonna say i've got i got i've got much better at it <clears throat> Because I played it a bit now, um, the the enemies that were giving me tons of trouble, just just the guy with the pitchfork, you know. Originally, I was like, "What the fuck am I doing with him?" It's ridiculous now thinking about it. A couple of hours of gameplay, and he's he's trivial. He, there's nothing to him at all now. 
Have you learned to use the pistol for the, um, the staggering? The staggering, sorry. I do know about the visceral attacks. I haven't figured them out fully yet because um, I'm on Father Gascoigne and I know he's particularly susceptible to um, to pistol. Um, I've got the blunderbuss, but I think they're all generally the same principle. I think um, so. Uh, pistol stuns or something you can call them, but the visceral attacks are when you've stunned them and you hit them just as they're going to hit you or something. I think I've done that a few times. I'm not sure because they seem to land flat on the the face when there's, when I hit them really hard. The, uh, normally, if you get the visceral um, attack, there's it's similar to Dark Souls. There's, there's a little just audible kind of cue that you've got it. Right. So like it, it's. I think if um, if an enemy's just about winding up to attack you, so say somebody's coming towards you with an axe like that, just as they start to swing, if you shoot them, you'll hear just I think it's like a little chime, and it's like a ding, and then it's like okay, I can I can get this visceral attack and probably one shot them now. But okay. it, it's it, it's very similar to Dark Souls with the parrying. I've never I've, I played the original Dark Souls for about five seconds because it wasn't working on my PC. But <laughs> other than that, I've I've not played anything but Bloodborne now. So, but I do like it and I get it. I get why people like it. I can also understand why some people w definitely wouldn't like it. Uh, it's very doesn't I, hold your hand, does it at all? I'm not like, sure. I'm, I'm not sure it's Marmite either because I'm kind of still in the middle. I'm I'm addicted to it. It don't. I'm, I'm want to go back, but I'm not utterly kind of sold on it as as a yeah. as a fun experience in games. I get that. Yeah. You know? I think the people who do like it kind of then have a bit of a, like, you know, almost like a pissing contest with it, you know, like, towards when they've been through the game a couple of times, and then it's almost like who's better at Dark Souls, even though you can only play, I mean, you can evade each other, but your chances are just, you know, non-existent, but you can play together, so it's almost just like, oh, you play on yours, you play on yours, you can do the boss first. But I found with the Souls games, especially at the, because I've picked up, like one and now i was just like so everyone says this game's really hard and i was like holy shit this is really fucking hard way harder than i imagined and it was because my confidence with the game was just like absolutely nothing and then i would like panic roll and move out the way way too early and still get caught and you'd be mm. like what the fuck i rolled and it's just like yeah you did it too early and then you learn from these little mistakes and then eventually you just get to the point where you need to realize that like it's just having that confidence to it's a fucking game and there's Oh yeah, you've lost some souls, but you can play that shit for as long as you want. Get the souls back; it doesn't really matter that much. Just have a go at it, learn the enemy because you are going to die, and just got you just gotta accept it like as much the, as you don't want to. The missus has been uh, kind of poking me a little bit, saying she's she's going to complete it tonight while I'm while I'm up here. She's shit at computer games, so there's no chance in hell of that ever, <laughs> unless she. I mean, and there's no chance. There's literally no chance with that game. But Chris, you're going to go downstairs after the podcast. She's going to be sat there with the biggest grid on her face, saying, "Get good, scrub." <laughs> <laughs> if she, honestly, if she does that, I am never playing a computer game again. It is so difficult. Knowing how her dexterity is, in, she said she got about 500 souls last time she played it uh, earlier on today. Um, and I was like, "That's quite." I'm quite proud of her, to be fair, because because of how bad she is. She's she's obviously watched me play, and she's figured out some of the fundamentals. But she also doesn't have much confidence with computer games either, which is uh, a big thing. But I think Danny's Danny right though said. about about the confidence thing. It's when you go into the game thinking it's going to be hard, it does make you overly defensive. But the game wants you to be. It wants you to be quick, and it wants you to be offensive, but just be smart about it. Mm. That's all. All that's what it rewards. Defensiveness just doesn't reward. Yeah, um, I found that especially the simpler en enemies. Uh, the I'm quite aggressive with them now because I know I know what to expect from them. I know they're not going to attack me straight away, and if they do, I know that I can dodge fairly quickly. So yeah, and you get it's like even the 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 big ogre things with the bricks, you know. That, they destroyed me the first time I went near them because I didn't oh, understand yeah. the patterns. I didn't understand what was going on. It is There is an element of randomness to it, but you can kind of tell what's going to happen. Um, the, there's a lot of telegraphing in these sort of games. Enemies love to show you what they're about to do. 
They have and to. Espe- <laughs> well, yeah, especially with those big guys. They are so they are so good to practice the um, the stuns and the visceral attacks on just because they they might as well shout, I am going to attack you now. I also find them guys particularly easy now. After yeah. a, maybe three or four goes at, at the first one, I, I started getting used to them, and then you, you experienced ones that are slightly different and do have just slightly different patterns, but they're all very similar, and I can almost guarantee i'll i'll kill them now uh, i haven't died by one for a while but i'll probably do that immediately the next time i've learned how i said that a quick note on the end of that what i always found with dark souls was you could practice an enemy and i used to do it i used to practice bosses and enemies before bosses and stuff i'd practice them i get really good at them and then i go back to like two stages earlier and get fucking wrecked because i'm completely fucked their timing up and i've forgotten it all and like a particular part in dark souls 3 is that you get some dark wraiths that walk up now you probably don't understand what dark wraiths are but they're before a boss door and they look they look really hard like oh fucking come and take me on mate and like i was like i'm gonna fucking ruin you guys so i got really good at those guys and then i left the game for about a week i went back to it and i was just like oh these dark wraiths i was practicing on these guys last time i got fucking annihilated within like 10 seconds they just ripped me a new asshole and it was just like how like yeah you've got to just be all on the ball with it all the time like constantly if you know it's one of those games if you leave it for a week well that's i, a- I can i can totally see you going back into the game after a week with sunglasses on like okay load up car- <laughs> load up character Thug life xxx parrying xxx for tries to, tries to parry and then just ends up a smear on the just, floor <laughs> he runs up and just starts parrying before they've even attacked it's, why am i dying i'm parrying <laughs> I uh, oh. as a as a there's one other thing that I um observed today when the the wife said I'm going to have a go on the game and I normally I say well just start a new game and have a go, have you know start start your own thing I don't think you can do that on Bloodborne I think you've one game and there's no like save slots or anything I, but, I think I think there is but is never, there? it's all right but either way I it doesn't matter as you said it doesn't matter because she can just play my save upgrade my character a little bit and the worst she's going to do is upgrade the wrong stats that I didn't want Next. to upgrade, and and then it'll cost me a, a few more um, blood things, blood books, blood echoes, to <laughs> blood books, <laughs> blood blood pounds. And anyway, we spent most of this podcast talking about Bloodborne. Obviously, we all. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about my next game. We'll save it till next week because I played a fair bit of it, um, but I haven't played. I thought I can talk about it more next week. Um, okay, so on to our next section then. Preview hot pants, messy hot Pretty. pants, or whatever we dirty, hot, dirty pants. hot pants. Dirty. So this is a, a section where we no longer just talk about games we're looking forward to, but we talk about industry news, anything, any kind of hardware, anything that's upcoming or anything that's been announced recently. There's a few things this week. Um, we did briefly talk about them at the in the introduction. First of all, last week we talked about the Nintendo Ring thing. Last Thursday, about nearly a week ago now, they um uh, they actually announced what it was. The teaser video, uh, which was a a video of loads of people from loads of different cultures across the world, all using this ring thing, and loads of different age groups and stuff, all having fun together, as you would expect from any kind of Nintendo advert. They've released, and I don't know if you guys have watched that link, but don't do it now, but watch it after the show, because yeah. the, you have to hear the guy... They have to listen to the guy and watch his mouth as he's as he's explaining things. It is so, so Nintendo. It's so over the top, friendly, happy, middle of the road kind of really deep, really simple explanation of everything. But anyway, either way, they've renounced it because they've got a new game that's coming out called Ring Fit Adventure. Didn't Ring we call Fit Ring Adventure. Didn't we? Fit Adventure. Didn't we call this being a fitness thing for the Switch? Yeah, of course we did. We yeah. saw everyone jumping around doing fitness things and not getting sweaty. Um, anyway, so apparently Ring Fit Adventure is about this evil bodybuilding dragon called Drago who uh, has basically taken over the world and you have to follow a guided path, so it's very much a linear game. Um, as you're running... They say that the emphasis is on the adventure side, not on the fitness side, but it's blatantly on the fitness side. I'm not sure why they're trying to sell it as a game to an audience that don't necessarily want a game. They want to get involved on the fitness 
side, yeah. I would imagine. Um, anyway, so your the the combat looks like it's kind of turn based as well. So you you do a, an action, you know, damage some damage some mobs. It looks like it's like a turn based kind of Final Fantasy kind of setup, you know, active time battle type thing. I don't know if it's going to be as complicated as that. Um, but no. you use gone, Matt. I was just going to say, if you're going to get your nan to play it, then I don't think it's going to be like, oh, I need to suck it my materia. Hold on a second, love. <laughs> no, I don't think it goes that far. <laughs> yeah, I've just got to change my Joy-Con physically in real life. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, yeah, you've got... Um, there's loads of different play modes as well. You can do challenges and um, like loads of uh, daily kind of st- like fitness exercises as well. Um, there's a silent mode, so instead of you having to jump up and down and make loads of banging noises, so if you don't want to bother your neighbours, you can just basically go, we want it on silent mode, so you just basically have to do that. Nice. Which, I suppose that's more gaming mode, I suppose, if you want to think about it that way, instead of... Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if the ring is necessary or not. I'm not sure how it detects, because the Joy-Con just know. slots into it. Uh, I don't. But it has got it... connectors on the Joy-Con, so maybe it's got some uh, okay. detection. Some I mean, yeah. the, I mean, I could imagine it being interesting if you could use it, say, as like a bow and arrow or something. Or like you could stretch the ring out and then let go to fire. But then you're probably going to end up flinging your Wii, not your Wii, your Switch controller Bam. at the screen. And then it's Wii 2.0, isn't it? It's like, oh, I've <laughs> shattered my OLED. Great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't even hit him. <laughs> uh, the, at the end of each of like your levels or battles or challenges or anything that you're doing, it, you get shown your calories as well and things like that so it, it's blatantly focused at a, a fitness market uh, there's very little game involved 80 pound 80 uh sorry dollars the uk price wasn't announced when i last looked and it's um that for that you get the joy con sorry not the joy con it's called a ring con <laughs> right you got a ring con a, a, the innovative leg strap oh that's the second bit you get like a little garter to wear um, and you get the game, uh, we Ring Fit Adventure. Hasn't been any announcements for any other developers supporting this yet, so we'll have to wait and see. But it could very well be a Christmas number one sales thing for Jesus families. Christ. I cannot wait to see the uh, pictures on Reddit where they get 10,000 upvotes because, it's, look, it's my wedding day. This is my garter. It's a Joy-Con. Woo! Oh. <laughs> I'm yes. calling it now, and I'm already. I'm. I'm preemptively downvoting. I'm. I'm ready. I. I. And I'm angry. I am, am absolutely. Now you said that out loud. I am absolutely positive that will be a thing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, watch that video. Um, we'll we'll paste the link in our show notes as well on whatever platform, YouTube or, or Fireside that you you're listening on. Um, yeah, out, out on the 18th of October in North America and Japan. Not sure on the UK release date yet. I'm not sure if it's coming out at the same time. There was nothing I could find, but I don't particularly care. I'm probably not going to buy it, let's be honest. No, I mean, the, so, right, the story is an evil bodybuilding dragon has taken <laughs> over the world. Yeah, and if, you, have to go and, you have to go and fight him and fight and you, through his minions. and Presumably you have to get buff and wrestle him. Is, is this yeah. like a furry thing? Is it a sexy thing? I, 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 I didn't read into it that far, Matt. Because <laughs> that, that's what it sounds like to me. I mean, you know, you do you guys, but it does, it does sound you, like they've got... You do you, Nan. Carry big, on. <laughs> I like the big dragon with the muscles. Reminds me of your granddad. Oh, Jesus, no. Uh, I don't think I actually saw on the trailer the evil bodybuilding dragon. No, it's X-rated. The car show yeah. on the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> right moving on anyway so i wanted to give a bit more of an update as to that if anyone hasn't heard it not that it's it's probably core gamer audience but we'll see we'll yeah. see how that goes you never know i might be buff by christmas so next up danny <laughs> what have you got to talk about this week so discord nitros free games section is disappearing pretty what's much that? what's so discord that's... nitros so discord nitro is like a subscription based service for discord it gives you a few perks for discord like allowing you to upload higher uh file sizes basically but it also comes with like more emojis cross server emojis stuff like that and you can also boost the server so i boost the lamp server and it allows some perks to be unlocked for the LAN server 
I haven't boosted it to a high enough level where it's useful at all yet, but it's the idea that you pay, everyone pays and sort of will, what's the word? Sort of like cheer for and contribute, like support, yeah. contribute to a community on it's like on bits Discord. on Twitch. Very similar, yeah. It's a monthly subscription. I think it's like nine, ten dollars, just under ten dollars a month or something like that. I bought it because I was sick of it telling me the amount of pictures were too big when I was uploading memes. So <laughs> <laughs> that is a, you got, got <laughs> you got the fun view of Photoshop. You know, you know modify yeah, them to be. I wanted those high quality ones. Um, <laughs> 4K but, uh, oh. images. <laughs> really zooming on the Joker's face when he's dancing. <laughs> Sixteen megapixel uploads. <laughs> I don't know why I was. I think it's because my phone takes pretty high res images and it does just too big. And I can't be asked to just downscale them. I don't want to get into Photoshop. If I'm out and about want to post something I've taken a picture of, I was just like, fuck you, Discord. I'm going to buy your damn subscription. Fuck you, but also here's my money. (laughs) Anyway, that service came with what's called, well, it's called Nitro and it came with like a free game section. And looking at it, it is quite extensive. It seems to be primarily indie games, though. There's a few like older triple a titles and they've got like saints row 4 on there and stuff but that's like old everyone's got that um, now though surely. Yeah, yeah that's the thing looking through the list of games though there's some good stuff on there but apparently no one has been playing these games at all because it's yet another gaming platform you've got to install shit from and manage and remember that you've got if you know what i mean when i, I mean, open discord i never think oh shit i've got all these free games i can play not once since i bought nitro have i thought that i've got all these free games the discord kind I'm... of loading screen and uh, not loading screen the discord um dashboard that you loads up when you open it up i think that promotes it but i never read anything on there i come oh, I straight in my see servers it. i see it yeah i mean once it's loading up i just see the shit memes that it posts like top decking lethal and then just frankly ignore it until it's loaded actual you've played, discord. you've played this game recently so read this news yeah. article about this game that you've just completed <laughs> no Why? but yeah i mean so the reason they're touting that it's to do with the fact that nobody plays the games but uh, this seems like a daft reason to axe the contracts with people if you know what i mean because they're kind of so paying are money. They- are they people axing are the money. entire subscription yeah, thing the entire, or they no just, they're just axing the... the entire game catalog they're not basically they said that they're not renewing the licenses with developers to be able to put the games on their platform anymore so they're going to end in october 16th i think it is it's coming off so completely off how is this going to work because this actually is slightly concerning for things like um if do do you buy the games on that platform or do you just get a sub get a load of games that are available like game pass right okay exactly like game pass so you pay your Nitro fee, and then you've got a list of games you can install and play whilst you pay for Nitro. And you can't and keep those games once this is gone now. Li- yeah, basically licensed to you whilst you pay money, effectively. So they're mm-hmm. just stripping it all down, but I don't think anyone's that fussed. They just thought it's quite an interesting little thing. It sort of started, and now it's very quickly coming to an end. I think it only started I mean, how, in 2018. How many different platforms do we have now that provide content? Exactly. You know, you've got Steam, Epic, GOG... You know, Twitch, I think, as well, and Xbox and Amazon. So, Amazon. What? There's so many people trying to compete for your attention. It's Origin, it, you play. Yeah, exactly. I mean, what what probably would be a decision from Bethesda Discord. launcher. Yeah, <laughs> for all it's worth. Oh, and there's the Blizzard one as well, isn't there? Oh, um, yeah, Blizzard. Yeah. What's it called? Battlenet. 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 The um, they I mean, yeah, they're removing their own sort of doing of the games, but maybe I don't know if they chuck on like a free code every month or something. To people randomized you know like a humble bundle type deal but for a few games or something that might but, i say it's going to entice people to join it but the games weren't enticing people to join it in the first place i think the whole point behind nitro is you get better server better quality voice servers which i have no interest in higher upload rates and stuff like that it purely is i think you know when it says <laughs> In Discord, when you come across a limitation, it's like, but the Nitro package doesn't have this issue. And it's generally when you're talking to people on the chat, not looking for games. So it was kind of a tacked on thing that they're kind of stripping out now. But isn't Discord, I mean, the only thing that Discord seems to be good at is the chat, yeah. like the community aspect of chat. I've got loads of servers that I've set up for various different projects. We've got one yeah. for, for this podcast, which, you know, got a few people in there, but it's not a massive community. Um, but Lanops is huge. Uh, my other podcast has got a fairly big, substantial community for, for what we do. But other than that, I mean, the, the voice is rubbish, the video's rubbish, 
the games yeah. are up. The game in whatever night or bollocks is bollocks. Why don't they just stick to what they know and be good at it and improve it? And uh, yeah, investors, yeah. I imagine they've they've probably got to show. Look, we're doing all this to try and get more people involved and try and get more money out of people. I imagine it's probably quite a boring reason like that. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. Everyone on the NAN seeming to put up gaming <laughs> platforms. Now. Another one bites the dust, but it doesn't actually make any impact on the gaming community, though. That's the thing. I it don't know anybody. Does. Hmm? Doesn't, did you say? Do, does it make an impact? Oh, right. Does That's it? A question. I'm not 100%. Like, nobody I know has specifically mentioned it to me either. Yeah. And I know a fair few people on Discord, and no one's once mentioned that. Oh, Discord Nitro is going away. Like, not Discord Nitro, sorry. Discord Nitro games are going away. No one has mentioned I just saw it on a, a new site. I think it was Reddit, even. Um, I think the only thought. the only platforms I'll be upset about at the moment are Steam, GOG, and Origin, uh, only because I've bought games on them. Like, I th- yeah. That's a different argument, though, I guess. Yeah. Like, if, if you take it as a subscription, it's like you could say, oh, well, I've, I've played this game on Xbox Pass and why can't I play it anymore? Well, you know, you you knew what you signed up to, but when yeah. you've actually paid for a game specifically so you can play that game, that, that's a different argument altogether. Yeah. yeah. I find a subscription-based model very much good for trying out games, but, you know, regardless of... If I wanted to play a game permanently with friends for a good few years and knew that the subscription based thing could come off at any point i would make my make my way to the actual purchase page of that game and purchase it but, so that they can't just nab it off me but hmm. that's with the subscription based stuff yeah different argument entirely for people who are doing actual <clears throat> purchases of games but i don't think discord does that things like xbox live you can buy all the games individually as well can't you yeah. so if i wanted to if i bought if i went on light sea of thieves you know and wanted to buy it because i was like right i formed a clan i really want to get more out of this game yeah there's that much in it but you know (laughs) uh, the lessons have been improved since i last played it um (laughs) but yeah it's 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 one of them you can buy it at least but are you not still buying it via the platform i forgot what they call it there's a term isn't it for for when you bought a game via a via steam um, I think don't you are you still classified as like a subscriber if you read through the EULA DL, DLC? Like no, I've forgotten the name for it. It's a well known term. Um it's it's just you've basically bought a game via Steam, via Epic, via GOG, and if that service goes down, you still don't own the game. Yeah. You're not a subscriber, but you bought a light can't remember it. Anyway, I'll remember it for next time. <laughs> Yeah, I see where you're coming from. I think the thing with the subscription-based things, though, is they're a lot... They're, they're hap- happier, not really. It's easier for them to take it down, if you see what I mean. You don't get as much uproar, whether as if people have physically bought games, i.e. they purchased a full game off of your platform. There'd be a lot more uproar if that was happening on Discord. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, moving on then, next uh, next thing to talk about, Matt. Well, I'm going to start this out with a little quote from my main man, Hideo Kojima. Even now, I don't understand the game. Talking about <laughs> Death Stranding. So if Kojima doesn't understand what's going on, what fucking hope do we have? <laughs> DRM. Oh. Digital rights management. That's what I was referring to. Sorry. Um Oh, is, yeah. is, is that what is it all a metaphor for DRM? Is it, <clears throat> so what are we are we the like fetus in the jar and then Norman? <laughs> oh right, oh that Norman Reedus is actually Gaben. <laughs> you you know what? If it is, then that was a complete coincidence. But I wouldn't put it past Kojima. <laughs> <laughs> I I have purposefully not watched anything to do with this apart from occasional bits. I've caught blips of Norman Reedus like dragon of corpse and uh, some baby in a jar or something. I don't know. I I don't care i literally do not care what the game's about i want to be in it i (laughs) so want that game i'm the biggest kojima fanboy on the planet maybe not the biggest but i really do (laughs) fucking love his games i love everything about that man's mind it's wonderful and i can't wait 
I I must admit I I do like his games and I am very interested to see what exactly Death Stranding is because I don't think anybody knows even the people working on it it feels like the sort of game where there's like five teams working on it and none of them really know what's happening and when it all comes out that even if they talk amongst themselves they still won't know what's happening you've got a ladder for some reason you can put so much weight on a backpack that you can't walk so like I, I I just don't know what have what you, what what's happening. Have you called it a luggage carrying simulator? Um, Is it, yes, I yeah, have. A luggage carrying <laughs> Looking simulator. At, yeah, um, I did see a little bit where they just kept adding more and more luggage to Norman Reedus's back to the point where he was hunched over like he was eighty years old, and that's something I really want to try just to see how slow he walks when he's literally got one hundred and twenty kilograms of weight on his back. You got a you got a thigh upgrade tree. <laughs> <laughs> Exoskeleton. You just see exoskeleton. His, you put a point. You put a point in there, and you just see his thighs inflate until they're thick. <laughs> thick points. <laughs> You've got planetary oxygen or planetary um, gravity upgrade tree or something. I don't know. You can reduce gravity. Baby don't, food dispenser. <laughs> The thing is, the thing that's wonderful about about most of the thing, there's usually quite a bit of fourth wall stuff as well in in Kojima's stuff, and I really enjoy. I just enjoy exploring his games. I don't. It doesn't look like there's that much going on in the game. If it's going to be as boring as the marketing is portraying it to be, in fact, you know what? I'm going to change that. I do not believe it's going to be as boring as the marketing is portraying it to be. I believe it's going to be crazy mental, kind of a lot more. I think he's probably only showing one tiny aspect of the game. And when it comes out, we will not know for a good few hours of playing it Yeah, as to what it's what it actually is about. And even then, as you, as you said, I don't think until the very final cutscene, I don't think until... The, the third sequel of the game will know what the fuck's going on, to be honest. I, I, I can see there being a lot of popular videos of people explaining the lore of like Death Stranding, like, you know, 20 million views because nobody else knows what the fuck's happening. And it all be it'll all be narrowly just zooming out. Like, you see in this in this cutscene, there's a rock over here. That rock could symbolize capitalism. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I yeah. Um Matt, if I <laughs> if I see you on the podcast suddenly rocking like fucking gold shades and like fresh threads and a fucking nice new microphone, I'll know that you've been doing fucking law videos on Death Stranding, <laughs> making those YouTube books. Did you realise that this jar contains a baby? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna narrate it all like an episode of How It's Made as well. So, now that's <laughs> genius engineering. Boop 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 boop. Thanks, Norman. Thorman. <laughs> <laughs> Look, How It's Made was a good part of my childhood. <laughs> I, I spent a lot of time on holiday watching How It's Made instead of going out swimming. <sighs> Judge me how you want. <laughs> so Death Stranding is something I've not seen anything on at all. Like, I know Norman Reedus has been modelled in it. That's it. And I've just got literally no idea. So when it comes out, I'll probably, yeah, also play it just to see what it's like. Not played a Kojima game in a while, to be honest. Did you play I... MGS Five? Yeah, and that was even then. Oh, two pretty years much ago. his last game. So that's no, wait, we I mean, haven't, I haven't played. played any of his games in a while. Right, like I've, I've not touched a Metal Gear game for a good long time. That's all. I was. I actually played uh, MGS One on an emulator a couple of weeks ago. Just very. Oh no, no, you what it was? It was on a PlayStation. I was in a burger joint in town. And uh, they had a PlayStation, you know, the, the PlayStation SNES and the yeah. Mega Drive, little little consoles, mini consoles, and they had one of them in there, and I played it for a little bit. Also <laughs> played Super Metroid on the SNES as well. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. I'm playing games no matter where I am, no matter what I'm doing, and I only all, I don't even take my Switch out with me. I'm... <laughs> what, are you, are you telling me you go out in public and actually talk to people? Goes into work film, can I plug this in, please? <laughs> Have you got a USB C? <laughs> I get the sh my wife will attest I get the shakes if I'm not playing a game at, <laughs> at some point during the day. Wow. I have I like that burger joint. <laughs> <laughs> break I break at lunch 
I go downstairs. Need to get that, to get that fix. <laughs> grab a sandwich and a banana or something. Come upstairs, play a game for half an hour. Squeeze it in in between in between uh, the banana and the sandwich work shifts. No, while while I'm squeezing oh, the wow. banana in. Wow. <laughs> impressive yes damn right we've probably well and truly run over today so shall we yeah, cut the we'll cut close the it shit yep oh, oh, oh it's been finish. a lot to talk about today oh. let's finish boys together and how's it and <laughs> that is that is the end of the show the biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the end of the show thank you, you very much on it. thank you very much for listening <laughs> and we'll see you next time on Resonance Arcade. <sighs> Daniel. You can watch all of our sh- <laughs> You can watch all of our shows on youtube.com forward slash resonance arcade or visit our website at www. Well no, just resonancearcade.com. Uh, where you can find info about the show and links to all of our social channels. Sorry, the www does work. It does work, it'll it redirect, does. but it's just wasted breath. We live in a web 2.0 world now. We don't <laughs> need a subdomain. <laughs> Where we're going, we don't need subdomains. <laughs> you can follow us on Twitter at Resonance Arcade, where we publish show announcements and news. And finally, 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 you should join us in Discord on discord.resonancearcade.com or alternatively, www.discord.resonancearcade. <laughs> that doesn't work. That doesn't that work. Doesn't work. <laughs> that that doesn't one work. doesn't work. So don't join us on there. Join us on discord.resonancearcade.com where we hang out and discuss all things gaming. Because only 90-year-olds put www in front of uh, third-level like domains. Yeah, sorry, this is... Uh... One of my bugbears. Right, anyway, so all that's left to say is goodbye. Thank you very much, and thanks for putting up with our shit this week. <laughs> I've, I've enjoyed it. Bye-bye, all.